Hello and welcome to my video um, on Kepler's three laws of planetary motion. So the first law is really easy. The planets move around the sun in ellipses, so not perfect circles. Now I will be clear on this though that they move in almost circles, okay? So there is a eccentricity to them, some sort of ellipsisness of their orbit. Uh, but it's actually pretty close to a full circle. So um, Earth's eccentricity, for example, is uh, basically how much of a, how far off of a circle is it? And the closer to zero that it is, is going to be the closer to, you know, a perfect circle. And Earth's eccentricity is somewhere around here. So uh, you can see pretty easily, pretty closely, um, that it's not actually very far off, okay? Um, it's pretty close to a circle, but the deviation that there is can be described in these couple other ways. So the straight line joining the sun and a given planet sweeps out equal areas and equal intervals of time. So you can see here that this is the orbit of a planet, and actually this works for any orbiting body, not just a planet. But if the Earth is moving from here to here, it sweeps out an area that's equal to here to here. Um, the sweeping out part is this gray part here, right? Uh, but if you imagine on the other side, it goes from here to here, and you can see that it must be traveling slower because the same amount of time, so equal interval of time, this is a shorter distance than this. So it must be going faster here and slower here. Okay, kind of an interesting uh, little fact. There's really not much to say other than that that's true. This concept is qualitative in physics 20. Both of these are actually. Um, so you don't need to know any numbers. You just have to understand the concept and answer questions about them, but no calculations. The third part, there could be some calculations. So the square of the period is directly proportional to the cube of its average distance from the sun. So there's a formula here um, with basically this constant basically saying that whatever it is for one orbiting body, it'll be the same for the other orbiting body, assuming you're orbiting the same uh, object. So when we're talking about orbiting the sun, um, that's talking about all the different objects that are orbiting the sun. Okay, so um, let's keep going and try a couple example questions. So here are three different example questions. Pause the video now, see if you can do them, uh, and then press play if you've figured them out. Okay, so for this first one, it's just based off of the second law, which is when the moon is traveling the furthest away from the earth, the the speed is relative to the Earth is at its fastest. Because it's further away, it must be traveling, uh, sorry, slowest. Slowest, I said that wrong. Um, slowest. Because it's further away, it must be traveling at its slowest. Okay, um, so that's based off of this rule over here. It's further here, so it's traveling slower, it's closer, so it must be traveling faster. This is, um, I kind of remember this using the like, kind of the slingshot rule. Um, you watch movies, you can see they go closer to a planet or closer to a black hole or closer to a sun, a star, and they slingshot around that star or planet or whatever, um, and they get faster when they get closer to it. That's the idea. Now, they kind of exaggerate the effects of that. You can't actually speed up. There's no it's speeding up while you're close, but then you slow down when you get further away again. So movies kind of get that wrong, but at least the idea of getting closer and faster, further and slower is correct. Okay, Pluto takes uh, 90,553 Earth days to orbit the sun. If, so, if the Earth's orbital radius is that, use uh, those values to determine Pluto's mean orbital radius. Now, you, I don't need to have this statement in here because you can just remember it's 1 AU, 
and uh, down here I've got the definition for that. So 1 AU is an astronomical unit given using the radius of the Earth's orbit. Now we are going to use the Earth's orbit because those are the values given, but in the second question I'm not going to. Okay, so what we're finding is Pluto's mean orbital radius. So uh, first what we're going to use is the Earth's orbital radius, 365.25. Uh, Earth days to orbit the Sun. Why is it 0.25? Oh, well, because of leap years. So it's roughly this. Uh, now this is squared, and then the radius of the Earth's orbit, so 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters, and this is cubed, equals um, the time it takes for Pluto to go around, days squared, and then over, and then we're looking for this value here, right? So we're going to rearrange this uh, to solve for r, so r is going to go on top, and then we're going to get the cube root of 90,000 this many days. 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters cubed, and then over 365.25 squared. I'm going to get rid of the meters just because it's easier to write. Okay, so then our radius should be um, math. We're going to get a cube root. So that's cube root, and then we're going to get a fraction inside. So 9553 5, squared times bracket 1.5 times 10 to the 11. Oh, whoops. Bracket cubed over 365.25 squared, and we get this answer 5.9. Two. Five point nine two times ten to the twelve meters. So that's our answer. Now let's double check to see if that's correct. I'm just going to Google it. Ah, see, it gives it an AU, um, and it's a very uh, eccentric uh, orbit. So it's very not circular. So this is the mean orbital radius, right? So if it ranges between 30 to 50 AU, the mean would be somewhere around 40 AU, is what I just Googled, right? So that would mean 40 times 1.5 times 10 to the 11. And so we got six, yeah, that's pretty good. 6 times 10 to the 12 meters, right? That's pretty close. Pretty happy with that. Okay, let's take a look at question 3. Um, a rocky piece of space debris has a mean orbital radius of 45 AU. What is its orbital period? Now, keep in mind that we have one astronomical unit. Is that? I'm not going to use this, okay? I'm just going to remember that it's one Earth's orbit. So, if I go 365.25 squared over 1 AU, this is the Earth, and I compare the Earth to the rocky debris, whoops, and compare the Earth to the rocky debris, well, what we're going to have is, uh, we're looking for the period up here, and we have the radius, which is 45 AU. Okay, now we can move that over. So it's going to be 45 cubed over. And then we'll have 365.25 here squared. And that's over 1 cubed, which, as we know, it doesn't really matter. Now this is T squared, so we can actually get rid of that. And we can make this a squared. And so now we're going to get our final answer. So square root of 
45 cubed times 365.25 squared um, rounds up, but actually we should get three sig digs, so 1.10 times 10 to the five days. All right, so I hope this video helps you better understand uh, Kepler's laws of motion and the square period with radius cubed law, um, whatever that is, the proportional law. Okay, I hope this video helped and good luck.